dear audience and spectators welcome to the channel again if you are new viewer please subscribe to this channel today we are going to discuss on Francis Bacon English philosopher essays jurist and statesman he was one of the earliest and most influential supporters of empirical science and helped develop the scientific method of solving problems. He was born in 1561 and he passed away in 1626. He was a rich and successful lawyer who became a member of parliament and in 1618 Lord Chancellor. Historians differ as to his importance as a statesman. There was no doubt of his cleverness but he was thought by many to be corrupt and dishonest. In 1621, he was found guilty of accepting money bribes and removed from his high position. The wisest, brightest minister of mankind, as Alexander Pope called him, spent the last five years of his life in retirement and partial distress. But this does not affect uh, his importance in the intellectual history of his country. Not only is he remembered for essay, but also for his contribution to uh, scientific method of solving problems. Bacon's principal philosophical writings are The Advancement of Learning, 1605, and Novum Organum, New Instrument, published in 1620. These were the only books that he completed of a planned sixth part project called in Ratio Magna, Great Renewal. He intended his work to be a survey of all learning of his time. So, he chose Latin as the language instead of English. Bacon wanted great renewal to lay a new foundation upon which the whole structure of knowledge could be soundly built. He also wrote witty and original essays. So, his major works include here. Essays published in first published in 1597, including 10 pieces of writing, and uh, the same essay was republished in another edition in 1612, including 38 essays, and uh, in 1625. 58 essays were published. Another work is The Advancement of Learning, published in 1605. Uh, in Saturation Magna, The Great In Saturation, published in 1620. Novum Organum, Scientiarum, New Method, published in 1620. History of the Reign of King Henry VII published in 1622 and the New Atlantis published in 1627. Let's talk about the, no, the Novum Organum. Novum Organum conta contains the famous account of the four classes of idols which beset men's minds. A fine example of uh, the imaginative wit which Bacon so often displayed in making his points. The idols of the tribe, deriving from the limitation of human nature, the idols, the idols of the cave, deriving from personal character and idiosyncrasies, the idols of the marketplace, popular superstitions and confusions, and the idols of the theatre, because in my judgment all the received systems are but so many stage plays representing worlds of their own creation after an unreal and scenic fashion. All militate against the proper use of observation and reason. Again, this reminds us of a modern semanticist analyzing the sources of verbal confusion or a psychological explaining the or origins of irrational prejudice. Bacon was not himself a great scientist or great philosopher. He was a master 
of prose, exposing whose colorful and memorable phrases help to popularize a new view of science. Bacon stressed on learning new things through observation and it is known as scientific method. Bacon believed that mind could attain truth if it followed the inductive method of investigation. He developed four steps of doing so, listing all known cases in which a phenomenon occurs, listing similar cases where the phenomenon does not occur, listing the cases in which the phenomenon occurs in different degrees, and examination of the three lists. Uh, these steps would lead to the cause of a phenomenon. Bacon suggested the use of preliminary hypothesis assumptions to any uh, to aid scientific investigation. His treatment of hypothesis is still a subject of study. Bacon also wrote an unfinished rom romance called The New Atlantis, which was published in 1627. It is a slight work. It describes how a group of seafarers come upon an unknown island in the South Sea, where they are hospitably entertained and told of the high sea of morality and civilization prevailing there, notably of the wonders of Solomon's house, a research institution in the description of which Bacon illustrates his own ideas of how research should be carried on. It all seems rather naive in an age when scientific research is as highly developed and as much taken for granted as it is now. But it is interesting as providing further evidence of Bacon's desire to popularize his views of the importance of experimental science. That commerce between the mind of man and the nature of things, which is more precious than anything on earth, as he called it in his magna in set ratio. In the New Atlantis, Bacon set out to write something like Utopia. The work was never finished, but it has an interesting description of Solomon's house, as I already mentioned. Uh, it's a superior kind of university dedicated to the study of works and creatures of God. It is generally thought that the imaginary Solomon house was of the inspirational inspirations of the men who started Royal Society in 1662. If Bacon could return to the England of the 1970s or after, he would be disappointed to find scarcely one Englishman in a hundred able to recall the names of his four great works, which I have already mentioned here. On the other hand, you would be surprised to find that essays are known about, if not actually read by almost everybody. For whom? For when he wrote them, he had no intention of producing great literature. Essay as a genre of literature was not his own, however. It was introduced by Montaigne. It was introduced by French writer Montaigne, who lived from 1533 to 1592. Uh, his essays, which range over a wide variety of topics, are characterized by a discursive style, a lively conversational tone and the use of numerous quotations from classical writers. Bacon thought essays as simply a certain brief note set down rather significantly than curiously, which I have called essays. The word essay is let, but the thing is ancient. By saying that the essays were written rather significantly than curiously, Bacon meant that they had been written for their meaning rather than for the style. He had in Macaulay's words a wonderful talent for packing thoughts close to the rendering it portable. It is this plain, meaningful, readable prose which makes the essays such an important landmark in the history of English literature. 
Bacon showed that this essence of good writing is to have something to say and to say it some as shortly as possible. So well indeed he say what he wished to say that man of his sentence have become almost part of our daily language and written in pungent aphoristic style Bacon's essays beginning with a volume of 10 essays written in a pungent aphoristic style in 1597 with expansions and additions and a progressively more discursive style in the volumes of 1612 and uh, 1625, the last containing 58 essays consist of reflections on human affairs by a practical psychologist who wishes to base his uh, ethical prescriptions on sound knowledge of human nature. The essays as a literary form had been invented by Montaigne shortly before Bacon adopted it. But Montin, with his rambling curiosity about himself and his genial and skeptical humanism, represented a different side of Renasa thought. The, the easy flow of Montin's prose represented a relaxed self-consciousness far removed from the impersonal wisdom affected by Bacon, whose early essays read almost like a series of proverbs. It is aphoristic element in his style that makes so many of his sentences, particularly his opening sentences, memorable and quotable. What is truth? said jesting Philip and would not stay for an answer. Mean fear death as children fear to go to the dark. And as that natural fear in children is increased with tell, so is the other. Revenge is a kind of wild justice. He that hath wife and children hath given hostages to fortune. A man that hath no virtue in himself, ever in with virtue in others. The essays deal much with public as with private life, discussing great place, nobility, seditions and troubles, empire and the true greatness of kingdoms and states as well as truth death, parents and children, marriage, envy, love and wisdom for a man's self. For a man's self. He speaks as a man of the world, illustrating his generalizations by references to history, often classical history, and his own experience, realist in politics, shrewd but not coldly calculating in practical affairs, Christian uh, in a general theistic way with more than a touch of stoicism occasionally rising to a somber eloquence in discussing time and chance and death or um, led into display of personal enthusiasm as in the essay uh, on gardens bacon in his essays is an impressive if hardly an endearing character Bacon describes some of his essays as civil and some as moral. The civil essays are those in which he sets down his thoughts on political and administrative questions. The moral ones are concerned with private and moral questions like love, marriage and the problems of parents and children. Some of the essays are on the subjects of which should now call aesthetic of gardens, for example, mentioned earlier here, of buildings. Indeed, it is a great variety of Bacon's essays which makes them so interesting and so impressive. He wrote, I have taken all knowledge to be my province. Bacon was a true man of Renaissance. From the discussion we know, anyway, uh, what we know is Bacon is man of letters. Bec what we know is Bacon was a great contributor in the history of literature. He was a great essayist, jurist, statesman, philosopher. Let's see what characteristics char 
Bacon's essays have. Full of aphorisms, ethical qualities, formal and intellectual thoughtfulness, archaism, especially Latin, Latinized diction, uh, brevity, there is no unnecessary discussion, no conversational tone, effectiveness of expression, uh, suggestiveness, and rich use of different figures of speech. I think with this discussion, uh, I have to conclude my discussion today regarding father of English essays, Francis Bacon. If you have any queries regarding the presentation, please don't forget to put in my comment box. Please don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe our channel. Thank you very much.